Well, Linda, here we are. In we Petra. made it. We made it to Petra. Through what? 30 security checkpoints? <laughs> Lost count. Lost count. <laughs> Well, we've got our first expensive. Uh, we got our first experience with the Bedouins. John doesn't have his head wrap on like Dave is installing currently. <laughs> <laughs> but I must admit, Katie's was the best. I think so too. <laughs> she actually wore it really well. <laughs> okay. Oria is ready for us. Right. Our guide's name is Oria. She's going to take us into Petra and show us around. Right. They've got horses and buggies for rent. As evidenced by the one that just went by. Yeah, these um, locals, they're the Bedouin people. They uh, have terraced the entire hillside with little stone terraces. And they're constantly messing with his head wrap. They won't leave him alone. <laughs> it's like a 700 meter walk to the entrance. And we go by an obelisk tomb, it says. There's some stuff carved into the bedrock over there. At least the horses and buggies have their own road. It's, I'm curious to see what kind of archaeological artifacts we find here. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's see. If I can get this picture. So they did copy in their city. The lower part, it's room with the three benches. We call it a triclinium. The upper part is Egyptian style. The lower part is Roman style. But together, it became Nabatian art. We haven't even got inside good yet. <laughs> this facade here dated to the 1st century BC before the Christ. At the main entrance, at the middle, you can see the benches where they used to sit. I think in the way back, there will not be people there, so you can take a better picture. <laughs> if you would like in the way back, you can get inside. You can go in. a hand carved water canal into the side wall of the entry. The age of this place is just out off the charts. The Romans built the road back when they came here. There's the some of the stone. Yeah. That's gotta be like 60 meters straight up. <laughs> it's a long way. Traffic jam in Petra. So now when we get there, when we get there, I will give you the explanations. Then after that, I will give you time to take pictures. Then we will keep walking. Who's not tired, we will keep walking to the third part. Okay? Now, you will find a lot of people trying to sell you some stuff here and there. From the beginning, say no, he will leave you. If he think you are thinking about it, he will stuck to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
We've made it to the treasury in Petra. It's magnificent. It's, words can't describe the craftsmanship. It's a little windy through this canyon. There's people upstairs. <laughs> it's just bizarre all the stuff carved into this canyon. You wonder how long it had to have taken. This thing has got to be 30 meters tall. I mean, look, and it's decorated at the top. It's got the step things in the center on the top and then that in between those two rows. Hardway, like these big steps on these ends. So how do they know this is old? How do you know it's old? Look at it. No, I'm not how old. How do they know it's old? They don't know for sure. Then how do you know it predates what she was talking about? Because they didn't have the technology it would have took to manufacture it. I mean, look, look at the construction. Look at the knowledge base required, the engineering involved to start at the top and carve that out to the ground and it be in the right spot with the right side. How long would that have taken? With, with hand tools. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, there's more going on than makes the eye a lot more. Well, it would appear that we've made it through the Valley of the Tombs and we're going to the Royal Tombs now. And the girls have found this. So it's really neat. Through her anecdotes, she gives people an insight into a way of life that no longer exists. Because now we're living in a village with 4G internet, pizza delivery, all the modern day things are available. Yeah. And this is what mum and I do nowadays. We're working with local women in Wadimusa where we're designing our own jewelry called Petra Pieces. So, uh, they're shopping for jewelry. The work in this valley is not the work of nomads. This is the work of a advanced civilization of people who had skills in mathematics and geometry and trigonometry advanced stone cutting skills, highly advanced stone cutting skills. They had concepts of gravity because they've got the channel of water at the entrance. You can't tell me this is a bunch of a bunch of goat herders come in and done this. Never gonna buy that. These people are way too smart for that. Yeah. They didn't have the ability to construct something with blocks. They had to carve it straight from the rock. Nah, I don't, I don't buy that either. If you, if you can math, if you can do the math to make an amphitheater, then you can do the math to cut blocks to build an amphitheater. <laughs> I mean, they carved an amphitheater from solid rock. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> and it's like a per, pretty much a perfect semicircle cut out of the bedrock. <laughs> Looks good too, even though it's weathered super heavily. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Got mixed emotions about this. Kind of does look like a bunch of tombs though. So I can go along with that part. Like that might've been a later civilization or something, but it's interesting to see the, like where the Romans added to it and build a stage. It's just kind of neat. You can tell lots of different people have lived here over the eons. For some reason, Teresa's feet and mouth don't work at the same time. Ha, ha, ha.
Due to the camels and the donkeys being in the canyon and the Bedouins maybe not bathing too, the odor here is unique. It's fine. Yeah. Until you get in a closed space. Yeah, I like that, space. like that little cave I went in up here. I love the cave Ooh. anyway because it's. It was kind of cool, but. Shady. The other thing you have is markets, lots and lots of commercialism. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to sell you some wares. It's not like, it's less of a historic site and more of an open flea market. <laughs> well, granted. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you had this in your community, would you not utilize every way to monetize it? Uh -huh. So, if you're looking for interest in little trinkets and willing to haggle over the price they're willing to haggle the guy started out wanting a dollar for a necklace for Teresa and before it was over with he was throwing 20 at her 20 necklaces for a dollar yeah yeah he was run it was a runaway train but he was up to five or six before he stopped <laughs> before he knew we wasn't pulling the trigger on it <laughs> and we're back there's a 700 meter walk out in the sun, as you can see. I got a shot or two on the way out. That's stuff like, like, I'd like to have known what this was when it was fully tall. Look at that. I'd like to know what that block was. That thing's incredible. Yeah, like this is the most awesomest valley ever carved by man. Yeah. <laughs> like right here. It's a huge block. It's carved in steps. You can see them. It's just unbelievable. It's just square. On one end, it's got a little hole in it. The trip today was all inspiring. It really was. It was incredible. I'm really glad we did this. We even uh, canceled lunch so we could stay longer. Well, this is David, the Georgia photographer. I appreciate you watching. If you like the video, hit that, hit that thumbs up. I appreciate it. And if you like my channel, you want to know when videos are coming out, down there somewhere is a subscribe button and a notification bell. You know how to do all that. So until next time, we'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, get your camera out and go take a picture with it. See ya. And I got a Coke. Original taste. I'm not sure what's in it. <laughs> but it tastes like Coca-Cola. So, okay, I'll take it. Well, we're testing Hopper's food from GoPro. We'll see what the stabilization looks like. <laughs>